Uh, hi, hello. Um, so since I've been here at the PG Open, I've heard a lot of people telling me, oh, you're going to talk about crocodiles. That's going to be so much fun. And now that you are all here, I can safely say that I'm actually going to talk about indexes and internal data structure and, and algorithm, and that you're going to be very disappointed if you just want to hear about crocodiles. It was a trap. So about me, uh, I'm a solutions engineer at, Lu at Cydus Data. Oh, I'm Louise Grandjean, by the way. Um, I, I started three weeks ago, and uh, before that I was a, a Python developer in a French crowdfunding company. Uh, I like Postgres like everybody apparently here. You can follow me on Twitter, and uh, after, well, I started publishing articles the, of, with the content of this talk on my blog, so you can uh, go on my blog, and if you want afterwards to read uh, in, on the articles, uh, it's, it goes into a little bit more detail, so... Here you go. So uh, today we are going. I'm well. I'm going to talk about indexes, and to start with that, I'm going to go to, into a quick reminder of, of why we use indexes, and uh, because a lot of the talk is going to be talking about internal data structure in indexes, uh, I need to introduce concepts like pages and CTIDs, uh, pointers, and everything. So uh, for some of you, it's going to be a reminder. And then we're going to dive into B trees, gin, gist, uh, all of this. So, first, because I promised crocodiles, um, here is the data model that I used for this talk. So, it, it's based on a real story where uh, crocodiles uh, get their teeth cleaned by birds that uh, eat the food between their teeth. This is actually true. Um, and crocodiles eat a lot of marshmallows or at least there is one YouTube video with one crocodile eating one marshmallow, so we can say that every crocodile ever eats marshmallows. Uh, so in this uh, scenario, the crocodiles want to get appointment with their bird's dentists. So uh, I have my crocodiles, they have a first name, last name, a number of teeth, and uh, their email, and the clover birds are just first name, last name. And the appointment, well, there's an emergency level. There is the schedule, so the time uh, where the crocodile would, have, would want to get their teeth cleaned. And, uh, well, other things. So uh, in this, uh, I, I generated with a, the, a database with uh, 250K crocodiles, 100,000 birds, and uh, 2 million appointments. So first, why do we use indexes? I think that the first answer that we all kind of have in mind is, oh, that's for performance, just we want to, the queries to go faster. But the first one that I would like to say is that uh, we use them for constraints. So when you cre create a table with a, a primary key or a unique constraint, they kind of transform into an index. So in my case, my crocodiles, they have a crocodile P key, the index, that is my primary key. The email is unique. And uh, in the appointment, I created a gist index, but we're going to talk about this later, uh, to prevent one crocodile to ask for two appointments in the same time. And of course, the second is query optimization. Uh, so the question is, why do uh, indexes help actually in that. And for that, I think that the image of an encyclopedia is kind of good because if you want to read everything that there is about crocodiles in an encyclopedia, reading the entire book would be a bit long. As, and at the end, you would be like, oh, well, there were three pages that were interesting for me. So instead, you're going to go to the index and look at the pages that you want to read. In the index, it's kind of the same. Uh, the index stores the value of the columns that you want to index and a pointer to the row. And so instead of reading the whole thing, it's going to go to the index. So here you can see a great pointer where, uh, well, uh, the mouse is the page, the teeth is items, and he's pointing at it. So it's, it's a pointer. Mm -hmm. So pages. Uh, pages are, PostgreSQL stores da data in pages that are of a fixed size of 8 kilobytes. Um, it's, uh, in an index, the, the items in a, in a page are, so the tuple with the value and the pointer. 
And uh, each item in a page is referenced uh, by, with a, a pointer, a CTID. This CTID is composed of two numbers. The first one is the number, the, the page block number, and the second, time, uh, the second one is the offsets. So here what you can say is that this is the root page of one of the indexes that I'll talk about later. Uh, the page block number is three. I think that it's a bit small for the people in the back, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, it's, this one is the second one, so its CDID is going to be 3, 2. So before going further, I wanted to talk about two extensions uh, that you can use in Postgres that if you're curious about what's going on in your, in your index, what are pages, what's, what's really inside of it, you can use them and, uh, to explore a little bit. So Page Inspect provides uh, functions for uh, B3, Gene, uh, what, Brain, and Hash. And Jevil is an extension for GIST, SPGIST, and Gin. I actually use these extensions. I will show later on the, how you can use them. Uh, but I use them to be able to actually do these uh, pictures that I will show of indexes are actually really with the real items and the real page numbers so that you can really imagine how it is in your database. So now let's talk about B-trees. B-trees is your default index. It's the one that if you don't precise using that type, it's going to create a, a B-tree index. Uh, really often for the developer here that are using uh, um, ORMs, that's what it would create by default. So uh, B-trees stands for balanced tree and not binary tree. So which means that every, um, every leaf uh, node will be at the equal, equal distance from the root. And uh, a parent node can have multiple children, which makes it a little, a little smaller uh, in terms of depth. And Postgres implements the lemon and yao bee tree. The, this particular uh, bee tree has some specificities that I will go over when I'll uh, talk about really what's inside of Postgres. So for this uh, B tree, I created uh, an index on the number of teeth because birds would like to search uh, for the crocodiles with the most teeth because that's where they get the most food. So a B tree starts like the first page of a B tree index is the meta page. The meta page uh, has uh, information on the B tree. In this information, there is the block, uh, the, the block number of the root page, uh, the level, and the same information on the fast root. What is a fast root is something that I'm going to go over when I'll talk about deleting in a, in a B-tree index. But what is important to remember is that because when you will insert into a B-tree, the root page can change actually at some point, which is why we need to keep in the meta page the information of what, of what is the block number of the root of this B-tree. So if you use um, page inspect, you can use this BT um, meta, sorry, I'm pronouncing it very French, um, for the name of your index and it will actually give you the information. And here you can see that I actually used the right uh, block number. So in a B tree, uh, the, in an in index, and actually in general, uh, the pages, the, whether it's the root, the children, or the leaves, uh, the parent or the leaves, are all pages. As I said before, they have a block number. And they also have a high key and a pointer to the next and a previous page. And also they have items. Items here are in green. And so you can see how uh, I didn't show until the leaves because there are a lot of items in my pages, so it would be unreadable. Um, but here you are. So about the high key. The high key is actually specific to this uh, yao, yao and lemon uh, bee tree. And it defines the biggest value that you are going to have in that particular page. So all the items that are stored in your page are going to have a value that is equal or lower to this uh, value, so to the high key. So here in this page uh, with block number three, 
I will only have items with uh, less than uh, 16 teeth. Uh, oh, sorry, I put three here. It's a mistake. Uh, here, the high key is 31, so all, all the crocodiles in this page will have less than 31 teeth. And here, the, there is no high key. What happens here is that this page is the last page of the level. So it's the rightmost page. And the right, rightmost page doesn't have a high key because we don't want to restrain the possibility of inserting new data in it. Like if I want to insert a crocodile with 100 teeth, I should be able to insert it in the rightmost page. I also said that there are uh, next and preview page pointers, so right and left. Uh, this is also specific to Yao and Lemon B3. Uh, this means that all the pages here in uh, the uh, uh, in a same level, oops, sorry, are in a linked list. Um, it's very useful, for example, for an order by uh, query, where you can actually start from the first uh, leaf page and you will directly have all the point, like all the rows in the right order. And if you want to uh, do an order by descending, you can uh, start at the last page and you have all the pointers uh, to the left pages. So it, it makes it very uh, nice for order bys queries. So if you want to have more information on, page, on your page uh, with page inspect, you can actually run this BT page stats. It will give you, so the block number here, uh, here you have, uh, well, the size, the free size, that's really important for later. And uh, these are the pointer to the previous and next page. Also, as I said, uh, a page has items in it. Uh, so, the items are so stored the tuple with the value and the point pointer. As I said, in the parent level, which is the case of well, the root and this parent, the value is the value of the first item here. So it means that, oh, it's very hard to read for you. It means that in this uh, page, I will have values that are basically between 16 and the high key. Uh, and in the parent level, the, the pointer is to the child page. So here it's pointing to this page, but uh, in the leaf, it's going to point to the actual row in, the, in your table, like this. So here I have a pointer to uh, the row with the primary key something. So to sum up in terms of uh, data structure, a bit tree is a balanced tree. It starts, the first page is a meta page pointing to the root. Uh, the root, the parents, and the leaves are pages. And each level is in a linked list. The high key defines the biggest value that you're going to find in the page. And uh, the items the, the are tuples with the value and the pointer, the pointer being uh, to the child page or to the row in your database, in your table, sorry. So searching in a B tree, that's very important. Um, here I'm going to be go very fast to, through the algorithm and then I'm going to detail some of the steps. So first it's going to uh, use the query scan to create scan, ski, scan keys. And then it's going to descend the, the, the tree. So it's going to start from the root to the leaf and find uh, the, item matching, the items matching your scan key. While descending the tree, it's going to have to uh, wonder if there was a concurrent insert which is why we're going to talk about locks and moving to the right page. So uh, here, for example, I start at the root page, and it's going to uh, do a binary search to find the item that it wants to follow. And so then it's going to move to that page, do a binary search on that, and uh, arrive on the leaf pages, and return uh, the first item matching the scan key. So about the scan keys. Uh, so what Postgres want is to uh, avoid redundant keys. So if you did something kind of stupid, uh, like uh, for looking for 
crocodile with number of teeth bigger than four and bigger than five, it's actually going to uh, keep the tightest bound, that is five. So it's going to return the crocodiles with six and more teeth. Uh, then, as I said, uh, Progress is using locks when uh, it's searching into a B tree. So when I arrive on a page, I'm going to lock it to make sure that no concurrent insert can actually modify that page. And then when I move to the child page, I'm going to relieve this lock. This means that when you are, for example, on the root, like here, sorry, this means that it is locked and it can't be changed, but in the, leaf level, in the child levels, there could be a concurrent insert happening. Which is why we have to look into should we move right. So when, it, when Postgres arrives on a page, it's going to look into has it changed since I, I decided that it was the right one to visit. So, for example, here I am uh, looking for the crocodile with over 20 teeth. I am here on the root page, and my uh, binary search told me that the next page to visit is this one. So what I want to do is move to the next page. But what happens is, so yes, the high key will, I think I can, sorry, I got lost. Uh, yes, so what happened between the moment where I found here that this was the right item to the right page to, to visit this one is that there was a concurrent insert and a new page appeared in my tree. In this case here, the, the high key is now 19 and the high key of the new page is 31. So actually the page that I want to visit is not the right one anymore. So I have to move to the new one. So Postgres uses this mechanism of checking if it's still the right high key to be able to prevent, prevent from having bad results uh, when there is a concurrent insert. So that's it for the search uh, part. So there are, we, Postgres is using scan keys, removing redundant, redundant information. Then it goes through the tree, wondering if uh, it's the right page to visit, uh, finding with the binary search the right child page to, to visit. And then if it's the leaf, it's going to return the item uh, matching the scan key. So now we want to insert into a B tree. So that happens when you actually update or insert because an update is an insert actually in the B tree and removing the old value. Uh, so what it wants what it does when you're inserting into a B tree is that it's going to find the right page, the right leaf page in which the new value should be inserted. It's going to lock this page, uh, check the constraints, because as I said, uh, the a B tr um, an, an index can be four constraints. And it's going to insert the row, and at this moment, it's where it's possible that there, is, that there could be a page split. In, if there is a page split, which means that a new page is uh, added to the index, it's going to have to recurse to the parents to add new items. So first, about finding the right page. Uh, if a lot of cases are for, uh, a lot of indexes are for auto-incremented values, like for example, in my uh, binary, um, in my um, uh, primary key for the crocodile, it's a serial. So instead of using the search algorithm to, to always end up adding in the last page of my B tree, it's going to cache, Postgres is going to cache the last page of the, of the leaf level. If it's a non autonomous incremented value, so for all the, the others, it's going to use the search algorithm that I was uh, explaining earlier to uh, be able to insert the new tuple. And now, page split. So if you are, if, let's say you're inserting into a new page, like uh, you're inserting in, in, an item in a page, but there is no space for this item anymore actually in this page. So what's going to happen is that it's going to have to create a new page and insert in it. At this point you could just say, oh, okay, so it's going to create an empty page and just insert whatever there is, but what we actually want is to minimize the number of page splits. 
So what Postgres does is instead of inserting empty pages, it's going to split in half what was in the old page and move half of it in the new page. So you will have two half uh, empty pages in which you will be able to insert. So that's um, what I, I explain when I say I'm, we are finding the split point. So now, what happens when we delete from a B tree? What happens is that, uh, as you might already say, no, um, when we delete an, uh, an item, it's not going. The, the space is not going to be freed immediately. It's not going to be directly deleted until a vacuum. So the the item is marked as deleted, and in the next scans, it's going to ignore the the rows marked as deleted. So it also is possible that if you remove a lot of rows, uh, you can end up with uh, a tree that would look a little bit like this, which means that here in my root uh, page, there is only one uh, item pointing to one page. So you have several levels with only one page, in which case the search algorithm, if it was starting from the root, would have to go through uh, levels that are already kind of and it, it would be a waste of time, which is why in the meta page we actually store the, the fast route, which is the last level where there's only one page. So, I've talked a lot about uh, B3, and uh, now I'm going to uh, switch to gene indexes. So, we use gene indexes usually for uh, full text search. And uh, actually, also, uh, Gin is really efficient when you are trying to find overlapping data, like, uh, sorry, more like arrays containing other arrays, or like, in this case, what I did uh, with my crocodiles is that I decided to add a column that is the heel teeth. It's the list of all the teeth that a bird has already cleaned before. So when another dentist comes, he already knows what, what teeth are problem problematic. So I am uh, using a gene index on this column. And uh, I'm going to talk now about the internal data structure. So a gene index is also a binary tree. And uh, it also starts with the meta page. So you might wonder, well, what's the difference between a B tree and a gene index then? To show you that, I created a, a, a B tree index on this heel teeth uh, column. What we can see here, and uh, I'm not sure you can, but uh, is that the value that is actually uh, inserted in the item is the, the complete array as the value. So if I try to use this index to do, uh, to do a query where I look for all the crocodiles that have the, the, the teeth one and two healed, it won't use the index. It will use a sequential scan because it can't use the value of the B tree. So what Gene does is that it's going to split the array. And uh, each value is going to be an entry in the B tree. So what you can see here, like for example, I had a crocodile with the teeth one and six yield, so I'm gonna have uh, here one and six as values. In a gene index, these values are actually unique also. So if I take my query again, now that I have my B tree, uh, my gene index, sorry, it's going to go from a sequential scan to a bitmap index scan. As I said also, uh, the, in a gene index, the values are unique. So this means that instead in, in, a, in a B tree, you would have one, basically one item per row with the value and the pointer. And this is not possible because we want unique values uh, in a B tree, in a gene, sorry. So what happens is that instead of, it's going to store a list of all the pointers of the, of the rows containing your value. So here I have uh, the CTIDs of all the crocodiles with only one teeth. This is a posting list. If at some point I try to insert in that list but there is no space anymore in my page, it's going to be split into 
so what we call a posting tree. The posting tree is going to take the CTID of the, of the crocodiles or the rows and use it as the value to create a posting tree. So in your leaf item, you will have just a pointer to that new tree. Also, it, as you can maybe imagine, maintaining the unicity of the keys in a, in a gene index, uh, maintaining the posting list and the posting tree is actually quite expensive, which is why instead of inserting uh, directly in the gene index, it's going to use a pending list. So all the new rows are going to be inserted in a pending list, which is just a simple list of pages. And they are moved to the main B tree uh, when there's a vacuum or when the list is full because there is actually a way to, um, to control the size of the pending list. Uh, when it inser inserts, uh, it uses a bulk algorithm that is optimized if a lot of rows have the same value, actually, which is why it's better. You can actually decide to not use the pending list um, in I would not, probably not advise it, but uh, if you're in a case where you have really not a lot of inserts, but you have a lot of reads and you want your reads to be very fast, you could actually say, okay, I don't want this fast update thing. I don't want the pending list, so you could set it to false. And uh, then it would, uh, well, not use it. Because it's true that the pending list makes it so that because there are rows in this pending list, you will have to go into, when in the search algorithm, it will have to visit the main tree and the pending list, which can be a little, little slower. If you want to use um, page infect, uh, you can actually get information on the pending list uh, in it. In my case, I have nothing in it, uh, but it, this function gives you information on the meta page of your gene index and it contains the information on the pending lists, actually. So, to sum it up, uh, Jim has, well, a met page, a B tree of, key, of uh, key entries that are unique, and the leaves either contain a posting tree or a posting list with all the pointers uh, to, um, to your rows in, in your table. The new rows are inserted into a pending list, except if you use fast update false. And this uh, list is emptied when it, it's full or if there is a vacuum. So now, gist. Gist is, as you can, before, we are, before the birds had to use a map to find the crocodiles, it was a lot of work, which is why we needed a website. Um, and so this is the index that is usually used for, uh, for post-GIS uh, data. And it's also great for if you need overlapping information, which is the case uh, scenario that I give here. Um, the big difference between a B tree is that first, the items in pages are, isn't ordered, and the key ranges can overlap. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you that here, for example, I created, so I created, created an index on the schedule because my birds want to be able to find, uh, um, to find appointment that overlap their free periods, I guess. Um, here what you can say is that the first item uh, in my uh, page goes from 2016 November something to 2016 December, and the second one is actually 2013 October, whatever, and then 2014. So the da data is not really, is not ordered at all in, um, in the GIST index. And uh, it means that an item can actually be inserted in different uh, pages. It technically in any pages, but that would be a bad idea. So. Here, if I, is it the right one? Yes. If I want to add a new appointment on August 14th, 2014 from 7 to 8 uh, a.m., uh, I could actually insert it in those two pages because here it end, the, the range ends the 14th of August at 8 and this one 
begins the 2014 at 7. So it can be inserted in both these pages. This, I'm going to talk about it later actually on how it chooses the right uh, page to insert. Uh, this is, is kind of a template actually. So it can be adapted to any data type as long as it provides a few key class functions. Um, so it really allows you to custom to to have custom data types, and um, for that you need to have these functions. Uh, and one of them is like the union. It means that, as I said, uh, the gene the the gist index stores ranges. So if you insert a new row into a page, potentially actually the range could change. Union is going to be the function that you use to be sure that the, the range of the page is always uh, up to date. So the second one is distance. Uh, as you can imagine, if you're handling, uh, as uh, in my case, a range of, uh, of a time, time stamp of time zone or, uh, or positive informations, the function can't be really the same to be, be to be used with order by, so which is why the the you have to provide the distance function. Um, and also, the consistent one is used in the, in the search algorithm that I'll go over in a minute. The consistent returns may be if the range could, range could contain your scan key and otherwise it answers no. In this case, if I'm looking for uh, appointments in 2000, and, uh, like on May 17th, it could actually be in those two pages. So for these two items, the consistent function will answer, yeah, maybe it's, it matches. So searching in the gist in, in index. Because as I said, uh, it's not uh, the, same, the same row could be in different pages and the ranges can overlap. It means that it, the, while searching, it will have to visit a lot of different pages. So what it does is that it's going to initiate a queue with all the pages to explore to be able to find the rows. So here, for example, if I'm looking for, again, those, uh, those um, appointments, I'm going to have to visit those two pages. Inside those two pages, again, the queue will grow. It means that the, actually the, um, the performance of the gist index will depend a lot on whether your data is grouped well or not. So there's a link with the inserting algorithm. A new item can be inserted anywhere. So what gist do, does is that it's going to use a class function. So again, something that is uh, for like your particular data type. And it's, this function is called penalty. Penalty is going to say, oh, how bad is it to insert in that page? So in the end, it's going to choose the page where it's the best or the least awful. And uh, yeah, I, did I zoom? Yeah. Uh, about splits, so it's, it's choosing the, the best page possible, at least. Um, what happens with page split is, as I said, uh, it's very much linked to how bad it's going to be to search in a, in, in a, in a gist index. So what uh, pick split is again a key class function, so provided by the user, and it, it's trying to make groups that with little distance between them. So here, for example, when it's splitted, it's trying to, to make groups that overlap the least as possible in terms of dates. So to sum it up, uh, GIST is very useful for overlapping, so geometry, geometries, arrays, so in general, post-GIST uh, insert like data. Uh, it's also really great for nearest neighbor functions, uh, also because of the distance uh, um, function that is provided by the user. And it uh, can also be used for full text search. Uh, and well, any data type can implement this. There are a lot of, um, there are a lot of extensions actually for GIST. 
So, SPGist. Um, SPGist is um, a little bit, uh, it, it's similar in GIST, uh, to GIST uh, because it also is based on a lot of um, user functions. The big difference with any of them is that uh, in any of the previous indexes, it's that it's actually not a balanced tree. So a same page, uh, but a same page can't have inner and uh, leaf tuples. For this example, usually it's not used for text. It's more used uh, for points, for example. Uh, but because it's simpler, I, used, I decided to use uh, SPGist index on the first name of my crocodiles. So here uh, I have my root, and the keys are decomposed. So here I have the, fir the first letter, A, uh, and then uh, the postfix, Drian. So in an inner tuple, you have the prefix, and uh, in a leaf tuple, you have the postfix. So here I have Adrian, and here I have David. If I want to insert into a, uh, a SPGist, what happens is that because it can't be, uh, the pages have to um, not contain leaf tuples and, uh, and, uh, and parent tuples. So here what it's going to do is when I want to insert Alfred, it's going to uh, split into a, a new um, prefix D and L and point to uh, these postfix tuples. In terms of pages, for that I used, uh, I used Jevil to be able to kind of show you what happens in terms of how it's divided. What you can see here in this, uh, in this function, it's uh, something called SPGist print, so it's a Jevil function, and it gives you uh, the leaf values of the postfix and the TID, so I knew that all these um, tuples, like all these tuples were in the page four. And what is interesting is that they don't have the same level. So for example here, my page four actually contains uh, this postfix Pablo for Pablo, and Louise for Louise, and Rian for Adrian. And so here the level is the second one, but for this one it's the third one. But they are still on the same page. So SPGs can be used for points. It actually can't be used for geometry, for example, because it doesn't, uh, uh, like it's not meant for overlapping data, so you can't use it for that. Uh, you could use it for uh, text search for prefix. I, I've never done that, but maybe some of you have. No, okay. And uh, in general, it's again, uh, you can, it can be uh, for custom data types, so there are, again, a lot of extensions. And, uh, well, for example, there's the KD tree uh, extension. I haven't used it, so I can't tell you much more about it. So Brin. Brin is for block range index. What it stores is basically uh, the range of data that you're gonna, going to find in a group of pages. Uh, in order to show you a bit, it's, it's um, oh yeah, it's not even a tree, like that's the first index that is not a tree, it's just a pages. So to show you what exactly is inside a, uh, a Brin index, I uh, used um, page inspect. What you can see here, so I created a, a Brin index on the appointments created at date. So what you can see here is that from uh, in the range from pages from 0 to 128, you would have uh, appointment from 2000, created from 2008 to 2009, July. And then in the range, uh, the, in the page pages block uh, to 128 to 256, you would have this range of data. So what it does is that when it's going to search, it's going to look at this range and visit only the pages matching, uh, matching your search key. You have to be careful about something though, is that if you have no correlation between the physical uh, location and your value, your brain index is going to be completely useless. For example, here I used it on the birthday of the crocodile. 
And what I can see is that all my ranges have basic, are basically from 1948 to 2018. So when it's going to search, it's actually going to go through the, all the pages. So it's completely useless for this case. So you have to use brain indexes when you have really a large table because the brain index is very, very small. But you have to think about the fact that value must be correlated uh, to the physical location of your, of your rows. And you also have to be careful about deleting uh, because it could completely break your, your brain index. For example, here I deleted some, uh, some appointment form from 2009 and 2012 for some reason, like, oh, probably uh, some people co complaining about GDPR. And uh, I vacuumed that, uh, that table, the table by appointment, and I reinserted new rows. What you can see here uh, using, again, page inspect is that my, uh, my range for the pages between 128 to 256 uh, is now from 2009 to 2018. So the range is very large, and when it's, you're going to search, it's going to uh, go through more pages. So you should also, so you should consider about is my data correlated to the physical location, and uh, is it, is it a, a table where I'm going to be doing only append? So, hash. Um, I have like four minutes left, so it's going to go pretty fast. Uh, hash uses, well, a hash function, and it's only useful, I guess, if you have data that doesn't fit into a page. But I've never, I've never used actually hash, uh, a hash index. It only works with the equal operator. And before, uh, before PGE 10, it was just awful because it was not logged in the wall. It was, uh, you couldn't uh, do a, a streaming replication. So like, if, if you were, like if there was a crash, you had to recreate your, in, your hash index, I think. So basically in the documentation, it was written big, don't use it. And I don't know if now, any, do, do any of you use hash? Well, okay. Which is kind of why I didn't, did, I do not spend much time on it, sorry. So, to sum it up, so B3 is, well, your uh, default index, it's great to use uh, it for superior, inferior, equal, superior, equal. Uh, Gin is great for full text search, for, whoops, uh, add operators is a uh, note that I, left for myself while preparing it because I had to change it, but I, I, I did not. Uh, so it's great if you're searching for data uh, containing, uh, like an array containing values or another array. It's also great well for full text search because you can search for like, I don't know, all the crocodiles that have pain, I guess, in their symptoms. Um, you have to be careful about inserts because they can be slow, uh, especially if you turn off the fast update. The brain index is uh, amazing for huge table because it's a very, very small index. Um, but you have, again, to be careful about the, the type of your, of your uh, colon and the physical location and everything. And uh, well, GIST is for overlapping, for pod GIST information. Uh, it uses key class functions, so it's very adaptable. It can, there are a lot of extensions for it. Same goes for SPGIST. Um, where the keys are actually decomposed and it's not, uh, the depth of the tree is not the same all the time. And well, hash is a hash. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, I started publishing the articles on my blog. I only have like the one on B trees for now. The big difference between this talk and the articles is that I actually give you links to the, the um, source code of Postgres. So if you're wondering, oh, I wonder what's exactly in the search function, you have a link to it and you don't have to look uh, on your own. So if you want to read them, uh, go ahead and I'll be happy to have feedback. I will announce when I publish the one on, uh, I think they will write uh, Gin, Gist and Brin. Honestly, Hash, I would probably not write an article on it, sorry. And so I'll announce them on Twitter.